All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the October session of the Coffee Talk for Adobe Bluffs Elementary School with Principal Peterson. My name is Brenda Sias. I am the current PTA president, and we are glad to offer these Coffee Talk sessions to keep you informed and engaged. Uh, today's session, Principal Peterson will be talking all about the vision that she holds for Adobe Bluffs Elementary School for the current school year and beyond. So, Ms. Peterson, um, take it away. Hi, thank you so much for joining. I hope you have your coffee. I actually just have my water here in the great Adobe Bluffs mug. And uh, in order to share my vision, I really wanted to share with you who I am because you would be better able to understand my vision and where I'm coming from if you know a little bit about my journey. Um, because we've all had a journey as a student in a school setting. And then, you know, of course I've had a journey as an educator. So uh, these are my kids, that's not me. And I'm a very uh, big Bruin fan. Um, but the, the story of how I went to UCLA, which is what I shared with my our students when I did my individual presentations in all the classrooms is that I really didn't know of any other school. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, yeah, I did live in LA, but you know the immigrant parents who don't know about the colleges in this country, this is where my two older brothers went. So there was no exploring where I was gonna go. You only go, once you immigrate to this country, you, you go where you know. And so my oldest brother went to UCLA, studied engineering, and then my second brother went to UCLA, studied economics and law, and I went to UCLA. And I did know though, the one thing I did know even at 18 is I did study elementary education. There was a diversified liberal arts program specifically for elementary school, aspiring elementary school educators, even at 18. And it incorporated taking a how to teach math and English and all the courses, even in your undergraduate uh, uh, coursework. So I immigrated when I was three years old uh, it didn't give me a substantial understanding of my home language, but I did have a home language that was other than English. And so, can you hear me? Okay, by the way, Brenda, can you give me? Okay. Um, um, I was an EL student and there was a different kind of assessment. Right now we have an LPAC and in a few years ago we had the CELP, but it was an assessment that I did have to test. Uh, in order to uh, be a full general, general ed student, which is what we call um, kind of the, the regular classroom for a lack of a better word. I went to school in Paramount and it was, I received free lunch from kindergarten to 12th grade and I depended on that free lunch until I went to UCLA, which then it opened my eyes to something different and new because I really hadn't been outside of my little city. And I didn't know it then that I was living in poverty, but I was living in poverty. But I still didn't feel like I was missing anything in life. Like my family, because as a child, all you really care about is your family. And I had great brothers and parents, and I loved school. I love school later in life. And I've been talking about that with my own kids. This is Lana and Lloyd, and they are now, I dressed them up in Bruin gear as much as I possibly could. And now they choose their own clothes, so I don't anymore. But Lana is now 10 and Lloyd is 13. And, oh, sorry. So in my educational journey, I've had 25 years in education and beginning in 1996, some of them have overlapped because you're thinking, gosh, she's done a lot in 25 years. So the educational consultant is something that I did immediately after school while earning my credential. Um, and also the professor was something for teaching University of Phoenix graduate classes, teacher education. I was a teacher education instructor for four years. And that was something I was doing simultaneously while I was a classroom teacher. So um, you're thinking, trying to divide the years, um, a lot of these have overlapped. But I have been a classroom teacher. I've taught fourth through eighth grade in the Los Angeles Unified School District. And I did teach in um, a higher achieving. It was a gifted and high achieving magnet school. So it was a school that had a wait list and 
our parents, our students, we were very motivated. I was actually chosen to open a brand new school, which was really exciting. And I did become an educational consultant uh, as well. I continued some of that work and it was something I was able to do when I was having my own children and took some time off. I, I've been a vice principal in Escondido Union School District for sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Uh, I was then a director of instruction. Gosh, actually, Grosswont came before. So I fell in love with some high school work as an intervention specialist at El Cajon Valley High. This is something that I stumbled upon is my work as a classroom teacher and educational consultant, a classroom teacher who re newly relocated to San Diego. Um, we had an increasing uh, enrollment of EL students at of Chaldean background, Chaldean speaking background at El Cajon Valley High. And I was hired to help ensure to, uh, that we raise graduation rates because we had students coming in at 10th and 11th grade. And how do you tell a 10th and 11th grader that they have little chance of graduating because they don't have the units. So we did Saturday schools, we did after school school, and you know we gave them every opportunity, whatever year they came to this nation uh, to earn a diploma. So that also helped me walk a different path of students who were coming to our, our amazing country. It's so late in life for a lot of different reasons and they just needed a chance to thrive. Um, I was also at uh, Steel Canyon. I created their I Academy, their blended learning school. I was a director of instruction of a charter school K through eight and then um, this is where I landed here as a principal of, of a variety of different schools, of an immersion school previously, of a blended learning school again, because I had that background. And all of these unique experiences, you know, has given me that TK through 12th grade lens of where I want our students to be. And even when I think about our specialty program now, I think of where I want every student to be at in 12th grade. Um, our motto of this year has been, or I started the school year with you've got a friend in me because all Adobe Bluff students need our collective best work, not the, no longer the individual best work because when I was a teacher, it was a lot about individual best work. Um, and developing relationships has won award-winning school, multiple programs that further enhance our school. Every piece that we are adding is unique and, and beautiful, and it really helps our students to thrive in this changing global world. And so I share this with the staff uh, uh, the school year, that it's about new friends because we have a lot of new people in a lot of new places. We have a lot of new students who haven't been here. So that is a part of our work. We've had a lot of students who haven't had play dates in two years. So how do we foster those? So new friends is one of our goals for ourselves and our students. Unity, uh, continuing to build the relationships moving forward as one mighty award-winning school. Our equity, our why. And equity means just all students. It's nothing you know controversial. It's all students. Equity means every student will thrive. And I also explained to our staff that this year, my vision and my mission is about clarity, uh, developing our own theory of action. And I'm gonna share what that was. Sometimes schools and districts do this great, like let's develop this and then you never look at it. So, you know, I dug up the one that was written in 2019 and I started putting that at the forefront of our conversation. And even if we need to adjust it, and so I'm gonna share that with you, but real clarity. I know as adults too, you have sat in meetings and you have sat in conversations where you have understood it one way and you're like, got it. And then, you know, your partner, your team member, whoever understood it completely different way. And there's no clarity in that meeting. So I said, even our, whether our meetings are long or short, we're going to have clarity. And I think this whole pandemic has brought just the clarity seemed like it went through <laughs> through the window or somewhere, but I'm really, I mean, if nothing else, we need to be clear about our intentions and our actions and simple things like due dates and what time the attendance should be taken. And I know those are things that we're working on together now that we're back in school, all 500 students and all the teachers. 
And we have never been here all 500 because even if we look back a couple of years ago, our school was really at about 300 students and it really started to grow and, and grow for obvious reasons. Obvious reasons that were amazing and so are you. And that's why we've, we're continuing to grow again. We lost a lot of enrollment to when the new school start opening uh, several years ago. Uh, because Adobe Bluffs wasn't a new school and it was down to about 300 and now we're at about the low 500s in enrollment. Um, those of you who are in education or kind of in the perimeter of education needs no introduction to John Hattie. It's like the, you know, everything that John Hattie writes, we, we read and we follow. And so one of his most powerful statements is simply about if you want to increase student academic achievement, give each student a friend. So then I said, if there was a person named Adobe Bluffs. And if you want to increase the teacher, staff, and parent achievement, it's also to be a friend. Uh, because we're also in this space as adults of, of needing that contact with each other, support from one another. So I'm going to tell you briefly about the story of me and my best friend, because at some point, a friend had to come along and inspired you. Your teachers. You know, in kindergarten, though, your teacher, the sun and the sun sets on your teacher, the sun rises on your teacher, and also on you, on all the parents. But you know, if you have a fourth and fifth grader, you see some of that changing. Uh, they they need friends. They need good friends. And so my story is that I did have good teachers in elementary school. You know, it was a high poverty area, but I feel like teachers who went to teach there really knew the community they served and knew that we didn't have band after school and music and art, you know, we had our home lives and that was it. Uh, I did believe that every one of them cared about me and about my learning and achieving. And for the earlier grades, that was enough. I had wonderful parents, supportive parents, uh, for those of you who like, and they weren't strict parents, you know, that they, people say, you must have had strict parents because, you know, culturally the strict. But no, they were very affectionate and it, it, it actually, this is why we moved here because we didn't want to be all about educational level defining who you are. You define who you are, not your education. And I had siblings, I've already told you how much I admire them and wanted to be like them, two older brothers, and we were one another support network. But my kids started to ask me about friends. Who did I look forward, who did I look forward to seeing in school? And you know, that was a very um, eye-opening conversation. And it also took me, I saved every test score that I had from the standardized testing that we did. It was uh, CTBS uh, then. And I saw how it was just kind of stagnant. I mean, it was high, it was good. But, um, you know, I realized at about middle school that it took off. And so I was telling my daughter that I really didn't have good friends in elementary school. So maybe that's why I didn't enjoy elementary school. And so my daughter who, um, you know, in first and second grade as she's really starting to write, uh, was into the, the Magic Tree House books as a lot of you might be familiar with. And there's a story of where she starts learning about this concept of time travel because they're going to all these places. And so in her writing assignment, in her first big writing assignment in school, she talked about time traveling, but she was traveling to 1981. And I thought, oh my goodness, you're reading and you're kind of, you know, it's your first long paper that your child has written. And she said, I want to go to 1981 and find my mom when she, I, she was my age so I could befriend her because I think she really needed a friend. And so I was like thinking about, I mean, that was so brilliant how she started connecting those things together. I did well in school. I didn't excel. Did I thrive? No. I mean, I did well. My parents, you know, were supportive. I had brothers who would help me with homework, if not my parents. So I did well, but I didn't thrive. And she knew that. I said, I was never confident like you. I was always a timid one. I, I always sat in the back. Some of you might <laughs> relate to that. So yes, I gave birth to my best friend for life who wants to time travel for me because she knew I felt like I didn't belong. I had parents who only spoke another language. And she, at that tender age, knew and understood my fears. And she knew that I would look forward to school if I had a true friend and she could sense I didn't. 
Um, and so that's what drives me each day at school because I'm also searching for who needs that extra just eye to eye contact and let's go over here at recess too. Um, and there's some pictures of me and her um, where we have in front of the Avenger sign and in California Adventure. And I've also shared this picture here, the one with uh, the Up character, because I've told the kids, our students, that uh, Up has been one of my favorite movies, that, that little grape soda and how everyone has someone in life. Um, that's a perfect example of, of when you thrive, when you have someone in life. So back to our vision and our work, our equity work is about love, our love for all students. And once again, I don't want the word equity to like, whoa, 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 we're getting into something controversial. Equity is that it's all students, every single student. Uh, do you remember saying it's not fair? And we all do, because we had a very different definition of fair when we were little. Um, and now as adults, it's all changed. What does fair mean to you? And for me, and I've shared this over and over with every teacher here, fair is that every student is getting what he or she needs to thrive at our school. So our vision is to calibrate and align our instruction so that all students thrive at our school. So that it's not about one class. Oh, you know, and I know we all feel this way. I hit the jackpot because I got in this class. No, it's about all classes. It's about calibrating and aligning our instruction. Because even the best teacher at this school, and you might be picturing someone, someone already, they have something more powerful to gain with the collaboration. So we are really working on the collective best efforts because that best teacher does have the 50 great ideas and 50 great instructional methods, but some of the other teachers, they have the one or two and collectively every day is about calibrating our instruction so that every student, no matter what class you're in. So it's not about, I got this teacher, I'm, I hit the jackpot, it's every teacher. And I really do feel like at Adobe Bluffs, we are in that movement because our teaming and our collaboration time is so effective. And I am infamous, I'm gonna say infamous. I am that person using my GPS going completely in the wrong direction because I'm just relying on it. So I kind of, you know, everyone has a GPS. If we think about the times that we actually used to take the Thomas guy out, and I would mark it all up. That was my um, weakness in life, sense of direction. So I was the one studying. And now we're living in a different world where, you know, my children have never heard of a Thomas guy when I start dusting it off. Um, so using our GPS, but I've talked to our teachers about gauging the progress of our students. The same way if I don't pay attention, just because I have my GPS on, if I'm not you know, looking for the signs like, oh gosh, it's taking a lot longer for me to get there. I mean, that should be sign number one. Uh, what am I learning? So being clear with our learning intentions and targets and why am I learning it? Both clarity and motivation because you and I, we did it just because the teachers told us to, but we, our students need more from us than that. And how do I know I have learned it? What is our success criteria? Making these clear, whether kinder or fifth grade, and then our students, this becomes a habit of why am I learning it? You know, and even if the teacher in middle school and high school, they, they continue this, why am I learning it? What is the purpose? And sometimes there are slightly, I'm gonna say, and you know that there are slightly less significant items that we learned in school, but as far as the standards, we call it the power standards or the royalty standards, like make sure you don't have time to get through every standards, but the kids must know some of the basic foundations of reading, writing, and mathematics, and the foundations of mathematics that build upon one after the other. And I am going to be honest, because, you know, in history, if you miss California history, that doesn't mean you're going to have a tougher time in U.S. history. You miss California history because that was a tough year. Um, you had a death in the family. You had, your grandmother was sick and so you were visiting. So sometimes I do say, and as an educator and as a parent, I said math and foundations and English language arts and foundations are critical. But if there is a year where we need to focus on less because your child needs to focus on some other life experiences, um, you know, I always say like history, even though, I taught history myself when I taught middle school. I will say 
Like you don't have to necessarily really know about the fall of Roman Empire in order to study the Greeks, you know, although we say you do, okay? Um, so yes, tell your students, yes, they need to know it, but you know that sometimes other learnings and other life experiences take front and center in your child's life. And that's okay. And that's necessary to let it take front and center. So we go back to our district model this year, which was about if you wanna go fast, you go alone. If you wanna go far, you go together. And we are all about at Adobe Bluffs going together, not only the teachers and staff, but all of you. I, I just, this community is something really special. Uh, I've never seen one like this. And even compared to our other Poway schools, it is really special. Uh, we have people from our community, our neighborhood who came here uh, because it's, it's the closest school to their, their home. But we also have some unique students who've chosen us for our amazing special ed department and our immersion program, and just that we do add culture and we have this teamwork and everyone is proud to be a member of our, our school and staff. So clarity and in instruction. So I had to throw another picture of my family. You can see that's me, my daughter, my husband, my son, and Cars Land. My kids had no idea too. And the photographer, the Disney photographer said like, pretend like you're hitchhiking. And they said, what? Like you're Ubering, you know, because you don't hitchhike, you just Uber. Uh, do you know where you are going and how to get there? And I wanna tell the parents today that it's okay if your child is getting there a little bit late, they will get there. Uh, we made as adults, like we're behind, we're behind, you know, because of this pandemic. We are not behind. I want to, I tell every student, you are exactly where you're supposed to be. This is exactly where you're supposed to be. Just like I give the example with older students, when I've had older students who feel behind, I said, you know, I didn't get married at 21 or 25 or 30. I got married at 34. I had my first child at 37. I could have been talking about, oh, I'm so behind. Oh my goodness, I'm not married and I don't have kids. But I was exactly where I was supposed to be starting my journey as a parent at 37. So if this math, it is getting you down, that is okay. Because sometimes when we're thrusting students before they're ready, it could take a year. But when they're ready, they'll just, it will come together in a week. So, um, you are exactly where you're supposed to be and it's okay if you're taking a little bit longer getting there and this year i also asked our teachers to really examine the systems that we have in place because every system is perfectly designed to get the results it is currently getting so if we have our consistent 85 percent of our school who are scoring extremely high and we are much higher than the uh, average Poway school district I, I think a lot of you already know that but if we're okay with that you know we need to take a critical look at the 15 percent because we're talking about all students every student I don't care what background I don't care if they just arrived here every student and uh, that was a part of our goal setting on Monday just calibrating on the percentage because it's usually about what percentage of students by the end of this year will score at or above grade level? And our goal ultimately should be all, but we're setting some realistic numbers and goals because we know that a lot of students have taken a step back uh, during uh, the pandemic and it's okay. It's our time to now bring them together, build those friendships, uh, collaboration skills. Um, I love this. I had to just throw this in because it was a t-shirt and it was reminding me just how proud that I am to be. Like, I love the branding of our school. I am, I do have a cricket. I'm not a, I'm not fancy like a lot of you. Some of you blow me away, but I can't wait to like brand uh, everything that I own with our, our school because it really does make me that proud. And I want to be walking around with it and have people stop me and say, oh, Adobe Bluffs, tell me more about it. Um, even though I, I live a little further away, some of you know, I live in Santee. So the theory of action that I dug up that was written in 2019, I said, let's own it, let's live it, let's breathe it. But let's build this and own this together, not something that was written for a document. Because so often educational leaders and principals write something because you have to write something and then you never see it again. So I brought this front and center for our teachers and staff this year. And I feel like it is very relevant. We could continue to add and tweak and update, but if we provide tasks that are rigorous 
and relevance for student learning and foster healthy relationships amongst teachers, students, and families, then we will see students that are passionate and curious learners pursuing their interests and using their strengths to become global citizens. So I feel like it is, it is very relevant, but we need to continue to just make this front and center that some things I know high achieving schools, we kind of talk about the reading, writing and math and relationships, but learning and all of that fostering and supporting one another. And I also would love to continue sharing my love for reading with our students. Um, I, didn't, I, I didn't go to Disneyland as a kid. I, that's why I take my kids so much as an adult. Uh, but I, I did have books. I did go to the library. I checked out a lot of books. I did have a love for reading that has inspired and helped me my whole life. So we have a new librarian, Miss Kathy Palmer, who was a former high school teacher, actually. And she, uh, like many of us, took some time off to raise her children. And she had some special gifts that I could see that she wanted to share with our students and a love for reading. So she created this with, it sits in the um, welcome back, the books missed you. She created this with her children and I saw them and it really is a, a special reminder of all of us working together. Um, and lastly, I would love to share my passion and leadership in supporting bilingual and biliterate students. Because for me, my journey came back in college at UCLA where I took Korean one, two, three, and four and became biliterate. I was bilingual, uh, immigrating at the age of three. So that is where I'm gonna stop sharing. Oh my goodness, I almost took up the whole time. Okay, question, sorry. <laughs> I don't see anything in the chat. So if anybody does have questions, feel free to unmute yourself, come on video if you'd like or put them in the chat and we can address them here in the last two minutes that we have together. Um, any questions? I feel like we, we know you more uh, now, Ms. Peterson, since we got there, I learned several new things that I didn't know about you. So thank you so much for being so open to sharing. Oh, thank you. Gosh, I, I thought it was like gonna be 15 minutes, but you know, of course everything takes longer, but you know, I, I want to say that our PTA, this, I've had uh, good PTAs before, but our PTA, I mean, they are so special. I do want to thank our parents because if anything, when I started working over the summer, it was our PTA and foundation members who were working over the summer on our lounge. And so the first people who actually welcomed me to this campus were our parents we're working so hard trying to create a space for the, the staff. So it was really unique that I, I knew some of the parents really well and I was trying to learn the names of um, the teachers. But I mean, my work is also, I wanna know all of you and, and I know it's harder and, and I wanna thank you for your patience because it would be so much easier if you were here. Uh, yeah. I, I have hope. I have hope that we will be here together one day. <laughs> I agree. And um, thanks for pointing out that the parent organizations, PTA and foundation really support Adobe Bluff. So I think the more that we learn about the mission and goals, we can better understand what our roles are as parent organizations um, supporting the school and the endeavors and the goals. Um, so this was super helpful. And I know that a lot of parents we really want to get involved. We have a lot of parents that just really want to get involved with the with your own child's education. And even though we can't be on campus as much as we would like to, um, there are still plenty of opportunities to get involved. Um, we'll go ahead and share um, an interest survey so you can submit your information if you want to volunteer or get involved. There are plenty of opportunities both on the PTA and the foundation. So um, we do need the help and the and the support. It all it all counts and it all goes a long way. And so Cindy on the chat said, "Thank you. Loved hearing about you, Mrs. Peterson." So it doesn't look like there are any questions. It is 9 a.m. So we'll go ahead and bring this to a close. If there are any questions that come up, you know, later on in the day, feel free to reach out to us. But um, thank you all so much for being here. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.